System Summit Dialogue with uh, more than 100 participants, many working in North America, but also many working in international organizations from all over the world, and representing a wonderfully heterogeneous group from the private sector, academic institutions, students, international organizations, big corporations. I, I thought it was great. I, I love uh, having the, the different voices. I think that was something you said earlier today. Uh, mm. It's just so important to get people to start listening to, to voices they don't normally hear or don't normally listen to. I think that's super important in, in making change. Yeah, I thought that was, that was great. It was a wonderful idea to have an event like this. Yeah, I also like the mix of, um, sort of a mix of enthusiasm and humility, you know, which is, which is perfect, you know, <laughs> the, the problems are huge and it takes all of us to figure out how to work together. Um, but this enthusiasm for, for really, uh, really doing it. Fun. Yeah, some of the things that are, again, you know, I, I'm particularly interested in the, in the scientific community, the academic community. It's so important, you know, it's so important for people that are working in research to, to listen, to listen to, to people that are working in the field, to, to people that are working in the private sector, people that are, that are just, you know, right there in, in, in the middle of the action. Yeah, yeah, I, I so agree. And I think... Um, such interesting conversations in the climate space uh, where the, the community of modelers has moved from, you know, sort of shouting at the sidelines saying, really, this is really important to being central, but it's almost as if we're now, uh, we need another set of tools. You know, we need the policymakers tools, which are uh, shorter term They're there instead of using sort of in crop, the crop world instead of using average temperature changes looking at you know the distributions of of extreme temperatures and looking at those pieces so i just i think it's such an interesting time for uh for that translation I, and i love that you brought that up earlier that that um that's such a key piece linking uh the the tremendous uh, progress that academics have made in in the climate science uh, so so i'm curious if, if this dialogue, I mean, obviously one of the challenges of having a, a dialogue like this is it stays at the talk level. <laughs> and I know that's, that was, uh, you know, one of Lawrence's pieces where he said, I don't, I don't want to do that, and where everybody's committed to kind of accountability. But, um, but I'm just curious what, you know, what, what are your thoughts on how we could, by the end of next year, come out with some real action from this and the dialogue itself is important but you know how do we how do we get out of that with some real um accountability as as lawrence said it's also very important that we create this this figure of a translator of an integrator a person that can talk to the scientists that can understand the science but then also understand the demands, what are the needs, how decisions are made, and then you can connect these two worlds. And, and again, I think that these type of efforts or, or these type of uh, events help a lot for that. And that is what I believe, that's what made me optimistic about action, is you know, now we know that we need to translate, we need to integrate, we need to convert that into something that can be useful, relevant. In addition to the translation of knowledge for policymakers or for farmers, I, I like the idea of linking in the finance part, the, the incentives part, uh, you know, to sort of uh, integrating 
uh, the the agronomic science uh, of you know what's going on 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 the farm in terms of of uh, mitigating greenhouse gases from agriculture, and then you know as as Bear has been super focused on what does that look like on the farm? You know we know of course it's there's a recipe of low till no till cover crops, uh, but uh, but there's a lot of the science we don't know. Uh, and then there's the question of, you know, what what do you need? What does a farmer need to change those practices? And and I also really like how it goes from uh, it goes across multiple uh, multiple tiers of the same practices. So so if you if you if you end up as a farmer creating a satisfying what we might want for a carbon credit, you're also improving biodiversity, and you're also having you know cleaner water and you're also and so so there's a you know this in, incredibly interesting area of well you really can compensate farmers if if we value these as a society and you start sort of stacking those payments um, it's just a, a super interesting area that we've been deep in there is a great future for farmers and this is something that i am trying to work more these days one kilo of corn produced using these sustainable, environmentally friendly practices should have a higher value than one that is doing, you know, soil is leading to soil degradation, more emission of greenhouse gases. And so the, the other part of, the, of, of this equation that I like is that there is an emerging market and a growing market of people, especially young people, you know, I, my daughters are the best example. My daughters are paying attention to things that I didn't pay attention. I, before my daughters eat something, they ask themselves, how was this produced? I don't want to be contributing to, you know, to climate change. I don't, I don't want to be contributing to soil degradation. Or before I wear these clothes, you know, are these people employing child labor? And so all these things are resulting in that people are valuing things that we didn't use to value. And if they are valuing those things, then the people that are producing those things should receive a better price. So that's another type of incentive. Is one is as a, as a policy, I want to, the soil is a public good, so I want to think of policies that can promote soil conservation. The other is help market to develop this environmentally value added of the products that are being grown. I would add, I, I think those are both exactly, uh, those are both the, the two big ones, the consumer and the, and the policy maker. But, but then there's the move among companies where you know we're offsetting our carbon credits uh, we're offsetting our, our carbon through uh, through credits which is growing hugely so so there's another market there um, and uh, there's and I think there's other markets that uh, that you know are being explored insurance you know uh, if you are doing these practices again on the farm uh, does it change what the risks are for the insurance company that's uh, that's insuring your your crop? So just super interesting area of how how we get um, you know it's behavior change, right? I always think that at the end of the day, the answers to climate change to really bending that curve are about behavior change. It's about yeah. getting millions of people around the world uh, to change what they do. For sure, and and. Yeah, so and that's the other, the, other, the other thing that makes me really optimistic is, is having you, you know, having Bayer, having the big companies in, involved in this, interested in, 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 in improving the way that we are you know, producing food. That, that is critical because you, know, you can have all this science, you can have all this knowledge, you can have the, the real change happens in the private sector. My vision for the Food Systems Summit next year it has already started in the in the conversations that have uh, that, that have already been percolating, which is just a lot of different voices. I think for a long time we've had the same people talking uh, to each other about the same things, <laughs> and I'm really excited 
to get new voices in and to have uh, to, 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 to listen, uh, to have people's minds open to understand these are super complex problems. And the only way we're gonna, we're gonna get to solutions is by doing that listening. And the, the second thing of my, my vision is, is the same as the, as the planners have said, is, is let's make sure that it lands with uh, not just standing up and making commitments uh, that are just voiced over, but, but let's figure out how we can actually embed that action uh, because we, we need to move fast. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I completely agree with those two, with those two issues, Sarah. The, the, other, the other thing that I found out is that these you know, sort of large events, they make a lot of noise. And when you make a lot of noise, a lot of the people that you want to listen start listening. The challenge is huge. We have to be very humble, but what we know is that we, if we persistently, you know, consistently act in the same direction, smaller things like maybe a research project or maybe a collaboration with the private sector help, and, you know, little by little and, and with consistency, uh, I think you, you end moving agendas, you end making a difference in the world. So, the, the summit, in my, in my view, will be great because of the two things you said, and it will also be one more big event that will make people listen. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Well, it has been wonderful to chat with you. Sarah. Absolutely. It's, it's such a pleasure.